Hi, my name is Mohammed Ibrahim and I will be presenting you the topic of sensory physiology. The first question that comes to our minds is that what is sensory physiology? Well, everything that we perceive from our external environment is detected by specialized structures known as the sense organs. They are also known as receptors. Their primary job is to receive inputs, transfer them to the central nervous system where they get interpreted and then our body takes the due course of action. We will go through each receptor individually in great detail in a short while. Let's just first go through the types of sense organs or sensors that our bodies have. We have the primary sensors and we have the secondary sensors. The primary sensors are our dendritic endings of sensory nerves and our secondary sensors are our specialized and we'll go over them in great detail as well. Before we look at all the receptors and their physiology, let's take a look at what basically the changes in the nerve fibers um, take place and in what form. So basically when we perceive a perception, then it transduces the word transduce is crucial here which basically means that the form that we perceived the stimulus changes into another form it basically transduces transduces into what it transduces into electrical signals. And if I were to draw a graph, and if we have time in our independent axis, and the membrane voltage on the dependent axis, then we can get a graph similar to this. And let's break this down so we can understand what's going on here. So this is basically an electrical uh, impulse known as action potential. And this is how the electrical signals are transferred along the nerve fiber when our nerves um, get stimulated beyond their threshold stimulus. So usually um, the threshold stimulus um, generally speaking is at negative 70 milli uh, electron volts or milli volts to be precise uh, which is a, a unit of voltage 
and then over time as we receive a stimulus stronger than our threshold uh, an action potential is generated and this phase is known as depolarization which is actually none other than your uh, potassium and sodium channels being opened and their movement across those channels on the nerve fiber determines whether we're experiencing depolarization or we're experiencing um, uh, repolarization, hyperpolarization, and coming back to the resting membrane potential. So let's label these parts. So we have our depolarization phase, and then we have our repolarization. And this phase, which basically um, sits beneath the th uh, threshold frequency, or threshold voltage, is your hyperpolarization. which basically means that the potassium ions, uh, the influx of potassium ions um, was greater than normal and the overall charge is more negative inside the cell than it normally was. And then finally the cell restores its um, normal membrane potential over time. Now in terms of how the sensory input travels across our uh, nervous system, it can be divided into two further divisions. Um, we have our somatostatic, somatostatic, somato, somatostatic, somatostatic senses and then we have our special senses the somatostatic senses are the ones that uh, in which particularly uh, the nerve impulses travel first to the spinal cord and from then from there onwards it travels to the brain so input goes to the spinal cord and then to possibly higher brain centers in the central nervous system. Then we have our special senses in which the information directly travels to the brain. Directly travels to the brain. That's the major difference between these two types. Within the somatostatic senses, you have your touch, you have pressure, and you have your detection of heat and cold, pain, And finally, your limb movements.
all these changes are detected by our somatostatic senses and they first arrive at the spinal cord and then they can travel to the brain. In terms of special senses, they basically do not require the spinal cord as an intermediate pathway and they are fairly more common when it comes to the, the, ca uh, the types and categories listed un under special senses. So what are they? You have uh, your taste, smell, your hearing, equilibrium, and last but not least, vision. And we will discuss most of these um, senses in great detail and how the physiological processes occur in them. It's interesting to note that two sets of sensory stimuli may generate different kinds of responses. For example, if we compare smell versus pressure they're both sensory stimuli, but the fact that they incur different kinds of responses and they're detected differently makes one wonder that where does the basic difference lie? Well, both of these sensory stimuli follow different neural pathways. For example, if I were to draw a simplified flowchart in case of pressure we know that the human skin has pressure detectors for example Meissner Meissner's corpuscles as well as Krauss Krauss's corpuscles. Now they do detect pressure but once the electrical signals are carried away from the receptors your receptors they travel across the afferent neurons, which are your sensory neurons. They travel via the spinothalamic tract and after they've reached the spinothalamic tract they reach the higher brain centers thalamus to be precise now in case of smell we have a completely different outcome if I were to draw in case of smell if I were to draw a simplified uh, lateral view of a human head or cranium then one would find that the chemoreceptors located in our nose detect 
the particles from the external environment, when we sniff, the particles go inside. And if I were to draw a human brain, a highly simplified version of the human brain, then one would find right underneath the frontal lobe that there is an olfactory lo olfactory bulb present olfactory bulb and various neurons um, carry the message across um, from the olfactory bulb to higher brain centers. So once the particles are detected by the receptors located in the olfactory bulb, they are then interpreted and um, uh, decoded in the higher brain centers.